Hello, this is Elliot Campos from the RRFC, here to talk to you today about the art of podcasting. If you have any questions at all, please type it in the box and I will address it at the end of this video. Now, a lot of young adults or adults who have yet to enter into the entertainment industry, a lot of them think that they can just go from zero to a hundred. You know, working part-time at McDonald's or some retail job and then get discovered and all of a sudden have their own radio show or platform to entertain the masses. The way the world works is that you need to show that you have that talent, that aptitude to be out there in the entertainment industry. And a great way to get your start is to podcast. Now, a podcast isn't that complicated. It's basically people talking, upload it to the internet, people download it and listen. And then, you know, if you have a website with some additional bells and whistles, maybe a message board or a Facebook page or a Twitter page, you know, you can definitely build an audience. And then all of a sudden, you have people who enjoy your brand. And hey, wouldn't they be interested if you made a feature length film or, you know, a web series or you got on the radio? Wouldn't they tune in and listen? That's the idea with a podcast. It's not something that's going to make you rich. It's not something that's going to live on forever in the annals of history. But it's something that can get people to know you. Something that people can be excited about. And as things change and evolve in your career, have people follow you there. So let's talk about how you get a podcast going. Now, a lot of the most successful podcasts have, you know, comedians on it or, you know, guest stars every week. And if you're just somebody in a flyover state in the United States, for example, you probably don't have access to Chris Hardwick or Kamal Nanjiani or any of these successful podcast types. But that's okay. You know, there's a very successful podcast right now called The Worst Idea of All Time. And it's about, well, the podcast features two not famous comedians from New Zealand or something to that effect. And they watch Grown Ups 2 or Sex in the City 2 every week and just talk about that experience. You know, watching one horrible movie for an entire year, 52 weeks, and just talking about how their minds are slowly devolving. And that concept hooked a lot of people. It got them noticed by Paul Shear, who does the How Did This Get Made podcast, very successful. And these guys not only built an audience, but they were able to fundraise the money to come out to Los Angeles from their other country and watch Grown Ups 2 for the final time in a big theater here in Los Angeles. So these guys, just by doing a podcast, were able to not only build their brand, but get recognition in multiple countries. Now, if you're somebody who nobody's heard of, you have no entertainment work to speak of, just having a good idea for a podcast, creating a good hour of audio entertainment every week is something that can definitely get you noticed. And when you're trying to land that good job opportunity, it's definitely going to raise some eyebrows and put you ahead of those other people who have just been you know, sitting on their mom's couch playing video games. So now let's talk about how you get your podcast going. What you're going to want to do is, first off, find a co-host. A friend who you really enjoy talking to, you can see talking to every, every week for an hour or two. You're going to have topics and things that you enjoy, shared points of interest, different ideas about certain things, so there's a good back and forth. With your co-host, you're going to want to find somebody who you're really comfortable with, that you have long, nerdy conversations with anyway. Because the first, most important thing about your podcast is that it has to be fun for you. If you're not enjoying the experience, the listeners aren't going to enjoy it either. They don't want to listen to you just rattle off the facts off of baseball cards. You know, everybody can just go to Wikipedia for that. What they're going to want to do is look to you for your insight, your sense of humor, you know, what you have to say about your topic. So once you, you know, determine your co-host, 
you can also figure out what you're going to talk about. Now, I've been involved in podcasts where it's just like, hey, me and my friend, we're just going to talk about whatever we care to talk about this week. And the problem with that is that it's just not optimized for search engines, you know? Nobody's going to look through a phone book and Google that person's name to see if they have a podcast and give it a shot. You want to make a podcast about a topic that you're passionate about. A lot of people do podcasts about their favorite TV show or bad movies or sports teams, comic books, video games. You know, you want to find a topic that you're very interested in. It's very passionate for you and that has a big audience so that when people are Googling, say, the TV show Supernatural, they find your podcast about Supernatural, start listening to it, and then you've attached yourself to a successful brand so that you can build your audience. One of the podcasts that I've done was called Superhero Sampler. And the idea with that show is that myself and my co-host would every week watch a random episode of a random superhero television show you know going from super friends to beware the batman to batman 66 you know all across the map of television shows that have featured superheroes and what's great about that every week was a completely different superhero tv show so that the people who liked spider-man the people who liked powerpuff girls the people who liked earthworm jim the tick the cape freakazoid Superman, you know, X-Men, all these shows we covered in an episode of our podcast so that when somebody would Google, hey, I want to listen to a podcast about Wolverine, Google Wolverine podcast, our show would come up. And then if they liked the episode that we did, they could look at our podcast and like, oh, you know, I like Spider-Man too. Let me listen to this Spider-Man one. Ooh, I really like the Hulk. Let me listen to this podcast episode about the 1970s Hulk TV show and from there they just started downloading all the episodes so it was something where there was enough of a hook that got people interested from all comic book superhero interests and then once they sampled it they would listen to other episodes and subscribe and the podcast is kind of on hiatus right now it should be returning Uh, within a couple weeks or months to a new website with a new co-host. But the great thing about that was that all we had to do was just watch an episode of TV, like 20, 40 minutes, and then just get together and talk about it. And it was fun. And that's what you need to look for. You know, whether you're going to watch a Tom Cruise movie every week, whether you're just going to talk about the great TV shows that you enjoy, you know, maybe you're going to talk about, you know, binge watching that you've been doing on Netflix. You know, just something where people who enjoy those those properties can find your podcast, get your perspective on it, and then become a fan of you. That's what you really want to do. Now, once you have this podcast going, you're definitely going to want to get like a good microphone like this. What I do, like the early episodes of Superhero Sampler have horrible microphone usage. As we went further along, we got a better microphone. We just put it between us. It's omnidirectional, so it records both of us. And that captures the sound quality a lot better. You definitely, one of the episodes on there, the microphone settings were tweaked. And it was just like, like horrible crackling the entire time. And you definitely don't want that to happen. What's really frustrating, and the various podcasts I'm on, it's happened multiple times that you record an entire episode and then something's wrong with the audio and then you have to record all of it again. That is the absolute worst because when you record a podcast, you know, maybe you have some jokes in mind, but for the most part, you're just talking off the cuff and it's fun because you're like engaged in conversation with your friend. But then if the audio doesn't work out and you have to re-record the entire thing, you're just kind of soullessly repeating everything you said. So you definitely want to make sure that the audio is working out right. So what a lot of people do is they connect it to their computer, the microphone to their computer. That's how they record it. I record it in GarageBand, which is a free program on the MacBook Pro. 
Other people use uh, Logic or Ableton, you know, some kind of professional recording software. And when you have this going, you know, plug in headphones or something. What I do is I just watch the audio gain on the computer just to make sure everything's going. Sometimes I'll be like, hey, time out. And I'll just listen to the podcast and make sure everything sounds okay. You know, we'll do a test run, you know, just to make sure everything's fine. And then, you know, once you get in your hour, typically podcasts are, you know, you don't want to go over like an hour. You, you can kind of do whatever you want. It's kind of like the Wild West. There are no hard and fast rules. But get your 20 minutes, half hour, hour, what have you, get that done, and then Once you have that recorded, you got to edit it. Occasionally, when you're having a conversation with someone, there are going to be long pauses. You know, I was recording a podcast and my landlord knocked on my door and I had to attend to an issue at my apartment. And you don't want to keep that in the podcast because it's, it's not interesting to hear me walk out of the room and have this little conversation about nothing with the landlord and resolve that issue. You know, you want to kind of stay focused. It's fun to do digressions, you know, go into like weird side pockets of conversation. But if you're having to deal with the mailman dropping off a package and signing for it, you know, you're kind of wasting your listener's time. So you have to cut all that out. And what you'll also notice when you start editing your podcast is that you're going to use a lot of, um, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, this, this thing, like, uh, uh, what's it called? This, this thing. You'll definitely notice that. And it's going to drive you crazy. Because in all our minds, we are, you know, smooth talkers. We're very, we're very great. We speak exactly what's in our heads, get it out there, and everything's great. But when you actually take a tape recorder to yourself, we all talk like morons a lot of the time. I took a speech seminar several years ago, and one of the things I learned from that was the concept of filler words. It's just that our mouths move faster than our brains sometimes, or that might be vice versa. And basically what it is is that when we're talking, we don't want to stop talking. So when we have to think about what word we need to say next, instead of stopping the talk out of our mouths, we just continue verbalizing. And when we have nothing to say in that moment, instead of pausing, we do uh, and that in podcast form is super annoying. I remember in school back in the day, I was listening to a presentation from a classmate and he was basically just reading his paper and then going off of that, expanding on the topic. But he would say like, and you know, multiple times with every sentence. It was like, you know, this thing like, uh, well, there's some apple juice and this apple juice is like, uh, you know, it's this, this drink that's very good. It's made from, from, uh, you know, the, uh, the apples and with the, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, the, the apples, the apples are condensed into liquid and then you, you know, you, uh, you, uh, uh, um, like you drink it. That's a horrible presentation. You don't want to do that. And if you want to be on the radio someday, if you want to have a talking platform, you really need to cut that out of your system right now. Listen to the radio sometime. Listening to Listen to the morning zoo cruise on the radio. Pay attention to how many times they say, like, you know, uh, um, uh. They don't really. They just say exactly what they want to say. And honestly, that's a skill. It's not that difficult. All you have to do is when you're talking, you just have to really concentrate a little bit. Just focus on what you're saying and be willing to pause. It's really easy to do us. I'm focusing on not doing them right now. But when you are in a professional setting, you want to be the best you can be. 
And if you are constantly uttering these nonsense words, you're not going to impress anybody. So what's great about a podcast is it helps you become a better speaker because you're the one who has to edit your words. You're the one who has to take out all those stutters and non nonsense little bits of business. So it's definitely great practice, absolutely. Now, in terms of getting it out there, there are a number of podcast hosts that you can use. I use Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. It's not that expensive. And then you can upload it from there to iTunes, which is the premier podcast hub. That's where everybody gets their podcasts. It's the podcast app on your phone. All that comes from iTunes. So you don't want to just have it on your... I have a, a Blogspot account because, again, that's, that's free, and I am not a millionaire. And with Blogspot, I have everything there, all the cast information, so that's nice. But with... I think it's Blogger now, actually. Excuse me. I'm getting up there in years. But with iTunes, that's something that everybody knows it. Everybody can find it. It's very easy, very accessible. Get it on there. Get your get your search-enabled topic clearly in the headline. And then market yourself a little bit with Facebook and Twitter. You know, build an audience by being in contact with people. You can get reviews on iTunes. That's great. But if you can build a community at all, a space where people can get updates on what's going on in the podcast, that's something that can only benefit you. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention really quick is coming to me in just one moment. Oh, Something that can really aid you in terms of building your podcast is guest starring on other people's podcasts. Now, if you're in a small town without a lot of entertainment people in it, that's probably going to be difficult. But Skype exists, so you can always meet people online and Skype into their podcasts. Otherwise, if you live in a well-populated city, if you can meet up with anybody, you know, find people online, see what people are doing in the podcast world. If you find anybody, connect with anybody like that. I live in Los Angeles, so I've met a lot of people who do podcasts, and I've, I've asked to be on people's podcasts. I've been invited to be on people's podcasts. And what's fun about that is that it allows you to mix things up a little bit, do a podcast, but talking about a different topic, a new topic, a new way of doing things. But what's really good is that you can plug your own podcast. So if you appear on a very popular podcast and at the end of the show, after doing all your vocal wonderment, after gifting that podcast audience with yourself they think hey i really like that guy or girl i want to follow them to their own podcast you just let them know what it is and you know sometimes you get new downloads a new audience and a big part of getting that audience is just spreading it out one of the first podcasts i did was called beyond school it is an audio play about a teenage girl fighting aliens at her high school it's i'm a screenwriter i'm a screenwriter by trade if not uh, by income and for me i thought it would be really fun to do that kind of thing it's hard for people to sit down and read a hundred page script but with a podcast that's something you can just listen to while you're working out or on your morning commute So it's basically my chance to tell a story and have people listen to it, follow along with it. I've gotten really great reactions from it, but the problem is it's not search engine friendly because it's an original story. It's my name's on it, the actors' names are on it, but they're mostly unknowns. I'm an unknown. So there's no real reason for people to be able to find it. 
So that was one of the reasons I created the Superhero Sampler podcast, because nobody knows what my little sci-fi audio play thing is, but everybody knows who Bruce Wayne is, you know? People are going to be interested in listening to a podcast about the 90s Batman the Animated Series, or Batman the Brave and the Bold, or uh, Beware the Batman. There have been a lot of Batman TV shows. And with that Superhero Sampler podcast, I have gotten audience members to come over to Beyond School because they really like the vibe that I was putting down, so to speak. Now, once you get your podcast up there on iTunes, you upload your one episode. You're going to want to update them pretty regularly. Generally, once a week is good. If you can always update it on the same day, that's cool because then people know when to expect you to have new content. That's really helpful in terms of building an audience to know when you're going to be delivering. So don't overburden yourself. I would say find something that you enjoy, that you like, that you are confident that you can continue creating that content. If you only update once a quarter, you're going to lose subscribers really fast. I recently was on a podcast. They were telling me that they update pretty regularly, but then they had to take a month or two off due to personal reasons, and their subscribers just plunged because people, they have their app that updates for them, and if if there are no podcast episodes coming in, they just think, oh, well, this podcast must be dead or something. So they just delete it from their queue. If you have to take a sabbatical or something, that's what the Facebook or Twitter page is for. So you can inform your fans, hey, I'm going to be in the Caribbean for two weeks. So we're unfortunately not going to be able to produce any more episodes. Or, of course, you can record a couple episodes in advance and have them auto-update. So that's taken care of. Otherwise, you can also notify people at the end of the last episode you record. Just say, hey, there's not going to be any episodes for a couple weeks, but stay tuned because we are going to be back talking about this subject. So this question comes from J.M. Rapton. What would be the reason for discouraging podcasts? So I'm guessing he's asking what the downsides of doing a podcast are. I would say that the main concern would be if you're appearing on someone else's podcast or you have someone else do your editing and they just upload it. Because the thing about a podcast is once you say it, it's recorded. So again, this is a skill that you need to have because if you're going to be on the radio or on TV or something, once the camera catches you saying something or doing something that makes you not proud of it it's there forever and it'll get out there and then you're done so there have been a lot of you probably seen them on facebook or youtube i remember i saw this clip of a news anchor who didn't realize his mic was on and he said some profanities on the air and he got fired just like that because public news stations they don't really appreciate their news broadcasters saying filthy words. So what you need to think about when you're on somebody else's podcast is just think about what you're saying. You know, there are things that might sound funny in the moment, but really think if it's something that you can stand behind. You know, I definitely had times where I said something and it's like, ooh, I wish I didn't say that because I didn't mean anything offensive by it, but you know, when taken out of context, it really makes me look like a jerk. So you need to be careful about that. But if you're editing your own podcast, then if you say something stupid, you can just cut it out. I, I can't do that full house thing. You can just cut it out. The other thing that I wanna mention about this question, what would be the downside of doing a podcast? The bigger, downside to you as a creative would be just doing nothing people I mentioned earlier that people think they can just go from zero to a hundred and that's not the case you need to work at it develop your skills you're not going to be directing avatar as your first movie 
but you can work up to that as you grow as a filmmaker. I don't know what the the best radio station in the United States is, but you wouldn't start there. You wouldn't start at ESPN. That's a guess if they have a radio station. You wouldn't start there. You'd start at like a local radio station. And then once you develop your skills, you can grow, you can advance. With podcasts, it's a way for you to not only develop your skills as a public speaker, as someone who can speak regularly, who can speak with confidence and skill, say funny things, say charming things, make people like you just through the words you say. But you also have content that can make people excited about you. So you really want to, as somebody who does not yet have the keys to the creative kingdom, if you can create things, that'll, that has the potential to be the key that unlocks the door to your success. So maybe a podcast, if you don't feel that a podcast is the best thing for you, maybe it isn't, you know, maybe you need to start writing or maybe you need to start a web series but it's always better to be doing something as opposed to sitting on your hands. As somebody who hires in the industry, as somebody who is looking for people to hire, it's always more impressive if the student, the, the job applicant can actually back up their words. You can say that you studied under this screenwriter, but if you've never written a screenplay, why would you be hired to write a movie? You know, if you think that you can be on the radio, that's great. But if you don't have any proof, then they're not going to put you on the radio. With a podcast, it's an easy way to build experience over multiple years so that when you go out to become a broadcaster on the radio, when you look for that job opportunity, you can show the employer that, hey, I've been doing this podcast every week for two years. We have a lot of subscribers. We've been updating really regularly. You can take a listen to it and see just what a great asset to the radio station you would be. One of the problems that I've noticed with several friends who have started podcasts is that they don't get downloads right away. You know, they'll do podcasts for several weeks or several months and they get one download or something. And it really discourages them and they kind of stop and trail off. And the thing of it is, the thing that's important to note is that it takes time to build your audience, to build your brand. You know, there have been a lot of podcasts that I've discovered. I listened to the Nerdist podcast for the first time last year, and now I've just been going through all the old episodes and listening to them. I didn't listen to those when they first went up six years ago, but I'm listening to them now. So it's a thing where if you keep working consistently as you build your audience, as people find your show, they'll go back and listen to the old ones. With the Superhero Sampler podcast I did, the great thing is that when people discovered it, they would download all the old ones. So there would be days when we only got two or three downloads. There would be other days when we got about 80 downloads because people listen to the old ones when they discover your show. The great comparison for this one would be stand-up comedians. When a stand-up starts as a performer doing comedy clubs, usually they just have to do an open mic where nobody's paying attention if there are even people in the comedy club at all. And it's very discouraging because they worked really hard on their material, but no one cares. And the sad truth is for a lot of entertainers, for many, many years, nobody cares. I can't tell you how many stories I've read about a writer or director or actor who moves to the big city and it takes them years to get noticed. Nobody has any interest in their projects, but once everything takes off, everybody cares. Everybody wants to see everything they've done. So you have to invest in yourself. Like I said, if you're sitting at home, playing video games, doing nothing, nothing's going to happen. If you try, if you create things and put stuff out there, you increase your odds dramatically. The other example I want to go into is the Nerdist Network. You know, Chris Hardwick had 
the host of the Nerdist podcast. He had success previously in his life. He was the host of Singled Out, I believe, which was a program on MTV in the early 90s, a dating show. I don't know how many of our students are familiar with it, but it did exist. And with the Nerdist podcast, he wasn't working a lot, and he just decided, hey, let's... I'm really into this podcast scene that's taking off. Let me reach out to my friends, all my comedian friends, and just start a show. And after he had done that for quite a while, it just took off. He not only was able to create an entire network of podcasts, including Kamel Nanjiani's The X-Files Files Files, and many others. The X-Files Files is the main one I know not only created this entire podcast network, but he was also able to get At Midnight, which is a show on Comedy Central, I believe, as well as The Talking Dead, which follows The Walking Dead on AMC. Both of those kind of panel shows, talk shows, comedy shows. But he wouldn't have had those opportunities if The Nerdist hadn't been so successful. So you have a chance to create something that will really register with something. And all you need is just a microphone, somebody to talk to, and a topic. That's it. Now, in terms of a feature film, you know, that's going to take locations, sets, actors, cameras, lights, a humongous expense, many thousands of dollars. A podcast is a cheap way to get contact ugh, content out there and build your brand, get people excited about you. If you can get people excited about you just by what you have to say, then that means they're not just interested in this comic book character you created, they're interested in you as a person. And as I said earlier, if you start another project, they're a lot more likely to follow you. And you need that audience there. If you can create yourself as a brand, much like uh, popular comedian Kevin Hart did, sky's the limit, my friends. The sky is the limit. Um, I don't know. How about, uh, like, revenue streams? Have you touched on that? Okay. In terms of revenue streams, getting money from your podcast, there was a period several years ago where that was happening now it's not not so much but if you keep at it you build your audience if you're getting hundreds of downloads a day there are definitely ways you can get a little bit of scratch for what you're doing the main thing you've probably heard if you've listened to any podcasts are doing ads for audible or warby parker you know just taking a little time out of your podcast to just plug this other company and then they'll you know toss you a little bit of kickback and that's something where it's again it's not going to make you rich but it could cover your hosting fees you know your cost of doing business and that's definitely something that is appreciated every dollar counts and the other thing that's really interesting that a lot of people do is uh, patreon which is a website that allows people to donate regularly to your show they can pledge a dollar for example and then every time you update your podcast they'll give you another dollar so it's basically a way for the audience to show hey i really like you i really support you i want to keep this going i want to help you keep this going now with patreon you don't want to do it like your first couple weeks that's something once you built the audience then you can really say hey, I'm creating this Patreon page to help support the show. The other option would, um, the other important thing about Patreon is there are rewards available. So a lot of people will create extra content if certain donation goals are met. A lot of people will invite, invite donators to be on the show. You know, I know one podcast called Dusted, which is a Buffy the Vampire Slayer podcast. Very good television program. This podcast, they actually have a voicemail, and they let their listeners call into the voicemail, record a message, and sometimes they'll play the messages on the show. So you definitely want to keep audience 
interactivity open listener questions is another great way that several podcasts do it just taking questions over twitter or facebook uh, much the same way we answered jm rapton's question from earlier just a way to keep that interactivity going with your podcast you definitely want to listen to your audience if they really enjoy a certain episode about a certain topic if it gets downloads through the roof uh, maybe you get emails about it hey i really love this maybe return to that topic a little later see if you have more ground to cover if you do an episode that gets zero downloads zero interest maybe stay away from that you know you really need to pay attention to everything that's going on, to how the world is reacting to your podcast. And again, that's why Facebook and Twitter are great because you have that interactivity going. You have a way for fans to reach you. And hopefully, if you're doing it right, you'll get a fan or two. And if you want to see yourself here at the top of the charts, just put in the hard work and energy and you can make it happen. Now, let's talk about your questions. If anybody else watching would like to send any comments, please type them our way. Uh, just a couple here today. The first one is from Jonathan Martinez. A couple questions. How do you plan your podcast? Where do you start? So the first thing I would say, like, how do you plan your podcast? It's really come up with a topic, come up with a theme. What helps me when I was doing the superhero sampler show regularly it was just okay what are we going to talk about next week we would always know when we recorded the last episode what we were going to talk about next time so that when we started up next time it wasn't uh what have you watched lately uh anything um what sh what should we you don't have to spend time pontificating about your next episode you can just jump right into the fray and if you're doing a podcast where there's an element of research in, whether you're talking about comic books or TV shows or movies, you have kind of research that you have to do first. If you're doing a movie podcast, you need to watch the movie first. So when you watch that movie, what's really helpful is if you have a notepad or a computer next to you so you can just take some notes, come up with funny things to say or clever insights to provide your audience. Talking points, as it were. And what's really fun is that when you have a co-host who's who puts in that same amount of dedication as you do, then you're going to have a lot of energy and occasionally you'll get a cool curveball that will cause you to think in new directions. So I would say just know going in, things to say, know what you're talking about so that you don't show up with nothing to say. Just have a little bit of preparation beforehand. And then uh, his other question, uh, where do you start? Uh, that depends on what your podcast is. You know, some people, I have a friend who's doing a podcast about Tom Hanks movies. It's called Tom Hanks Giving. It's very good. I've been on it twice, I think. And with his podcast, he's watching every Tom Hanks movie and dedicating, a, each, dedicating an episode to each one of Tom Hanks movies. So basically it's just, okay, let's talk about Turner and Hooch this week, or let's talk about Apollo 13, Philadelphia. Uh, uh, what's the Christmas one? Uh, the Polar Express. And so he knows exactly what he's doing every time he sits down. He, uh, he has a guest, a guest co-host at each time, which is another way to go. Uh, you just got to make sure that you got a good stable of friends because the most frustrating thing is when you run out and then it's... Uh, who do I put on this show this week? So just know what you're doing. Basically, have your topic, have your format down. A lot of people, uh, War Rocket Ajax is a comic book podcast that I listen to regularly, and they have a lot of segments on their on their podcast. There will be uh, kind of check in with what they're doing, recommendations of things they've been watching or reading or video games they've been playing. Then they talk about a couple comic books that came out this week uh, they interview a professional in the comics industry and then they have uh, a rotating segment that changes from year to year but basically in terms of formatting that's you know sections that's definitely something you can develop as you go along mainly you just need to have topics to talk about ammunition and the nice thing about podcasts is 
when you're out of juice, you can just kind of stop the episode. It doesn't matter if all of your podcasts are varying lengths. Just get as much good material out there as you can. And when the well runs dry, plug the hole. I don't know if that's an expression, but we're trying to make it work. All right. So the next question is from Danny. What is the best program software to use to record a podcast? Okay. So this question, I use GarageBand. I just keep it simple. That GarageBand is a free program on the MacBook Pro. So I just record the audio in there. I chop it up, getting rid of any blank spaces where no one's talking or filler words like uh, um, those, and then just export it as an MP3 to iTunes. Now there are a lot better audio editing software programs you can use, such as Logic, Reason, Ableton. I am unfamiliar with those. They actually scare me a little bit because they look really complicated. I'm a person who writes things. So I like a Word document page, which is just white, simple. I know what the buttons on my keyboard do. So I would say as long as you can get a good MP3 file out of the program and you're able to upload it to iTunes, you're kind of good. You're kind of covered. Nobody's going to be super fine tuning you know if you look at reviews of podcasts online you're never going to see the audio formatting of this episode was a little thin compared to its competitors like nobody really cares about that all that matters is that people can hear you Uh, and the main thing with that is get a mic definitely don't use your computer mic if you can get separate mics for both co-hosts that's really good otherwise if you get the omnidirectional mic so that it picks up everybody that's fine so make make use of what you can do GarageBand is free and that's one of the best words in the English language so that's not a bad starting point all right so uh, Martini Jean asks how do you get more people to follow listen to your podcast so this is about online marketing we talked about uh, being search engine friendly So that's just having a topic in your podcast that a lot of people like. For example, NCIS is the most popular show on television right now. You know what? I don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about Game of Thrones. That's big in the geek world. That's something I watch, obviously. So Game of Thrones, very popular. Now, if you do a Game of Thrones podcast, there are going to be people who go to iTunes who really like Game of Thrones and they want to see discussion about it. So they'll type in Game of Thrones into the search engine. And if you're doing a podcast about Game of Thrones, it'll pop up. And that's a way for people to find it. Now, beyond that, you definitely want to have a Facebook page or a Twitter so that people can subscribe to that. And you can even, on Facebook, for example, boost your post. You can have your podcast show up on other people's timelines. And if they're interested in it, they'll click. Uh, We also talked about guests appearing on other people's podcasts. If you have any other avenue to get your voice out there, if you write online, if you uh, write online, personally for me, on my Facebook page, on my Twitter, I always share my podcast and I ask people to share it with their friends, to retweet it. It's definitely a process. There's no, uh, there's no simple way to go from zero to 100 overnight. It takes time. Part of what helps, honestly, is to do it for a while. For me, when I look for a new podcast to listen to online, if I see a podcast only has like four episodes and hasn't been updated in about nine months, I'm not going to listen to that podcast. Why bother? It's clearly dead in the water. But if there's a podcast that has about 20, 30 episodes and it's still updating regularly, that interests me a little more because there's still life in that puppy. It's still going. There's a lot of material for me to really sink my teeth into, and that looks healthy. It's kind of similar to how with television shows. A lot of people don't start watching a TV show until the second season because the first season, it's, I don't know this show. It could be good. It could be bad. Who knows? It could get canceled. Why do I want to get invested in this thing? People didn't really get into Breaking Bad until the later seasons. So it's definitely not something that's going to happen fast. But 
over time it can definitely happen uh just keep putting it out there on facebook i always invite all my facebook friends to like my podcast and you know it gets through people find it people really enjoy it and basically the best thing you can do to ensure a bigger to ensure a bigger audience is to make a good product you make something good and eventually people will find it Okay, the next question here. Uh, Danny, again, is just asking, what about sports statistics players? Yeah, you can absolutely do a podcast about that. There are podcasts about wood carving, and I'm sure not just Ron Swanson's the one who listens to that. There are so many markets. There are so many avenues of content, basically. So many people have so many different interests that if you can find... Uh, like a subject matter that hasn't really been explored in podcast form, you can be the number one podcast for that subject matter. Now, sports statistics and players, that's probably popular. Uh, I know nothing about that stuff, but I know a lot of people care about that stuff quite a bit. So yeah, I think there are a lot of podcasts about sports. And the great thing is that I have several relatives who are really super into sports and the thing i know about them is that when they get going about sports they talk about it for quite a while and that's exactly what you want for a podcast i don't know like do recording an episode right after the big game of the week and talking about how it could have been done better what the team's what the team's doing that works what doesn't that's the kind of material that you can really get something out and if you get a good co-host who's really super into sports as well you can get a really good discussion going get some listening questions and what's really good is that uh danny to ask the question if you're passionate about sports then you can make a podcast that people who like sports as well will really want to be interested in and listen to never do a podcast about a topic that you don't care about because if you don't care about it your listeners not going to care about. So just follow your passion, you know? The next question we have here, uh, Jonathan Martinez, have you done any video podcasts? Personally, I haven't because I mentioned this a little earlier. Part of the reason that podcasts are appealing to me is because people listen to them on their commute or while they're working out or while they're walking somewhere. Video you can't really drive while you're watching a video, you know? The other nice thing is that when you do a podcast recording, you don't have to worry about dressing up too much. You don't have to worry. It's like the, um, what's his name? Ron Burgundy thing. He doesn't have to have pants on under the table, you know? You can do video podcasts. There are a lot of people who upload their podcasts to YouTube and get additional views that way. Another good way to build an audience. It's not super necessary because the main thing is with a podcast, it's about the words. It's not about the visual stimuli. I know that there's a podcast called, I believe it's Marvelicious Toys, and they do another one called Star Wars Action News Podcast. Those are, those are action figure-based podcasts, collectible-based podcasts. And what they do is that they show pictures of the toys that they're talking about. So if you can find a way to add a visual element that is going to supplement your podcast, that's definitely something that it's not going to hurt you. It's definitely something that people who are looking at their phone while they listen, it can be a benefit for them. But I wouldn't say it's essential. The more you can do, the better. Danny also asks, I have a PC. Is there a free software available? You know, I'm not familiar with the PC. I've been on a Mac for a lot of years now. What I would say is, you know, snoop around, see what's available. There are, I know Audacity is something you can download for free online. I think there's a PD version, uh, a PC version for that. That's Audacity, A-U-D-A City, C-I-T-Y. And that works pretty well, so you might want to try that. But you know, check around with, um, you know, Google, just see what audio software is available for your PC. 
like I said, there's no one who's going to criticize you because you're using software A instead of software B. It's really just about making sure you produce something that people can hear. If nobody can understand what you're saying, then the podcast just doesn't serve any real purpose. So a uh, quick note here, if you are going to start a podcast, we want to hear it. Go ahead and send it to submit at rrfedu.com for a chance to be featured on our social media. And talking again about, about getting your podcast out there, getting into the world, building that audience, this is a really great opportunity because you will be connected with the film, excuse me, the RRFC students all across the country. And the great thing about digital content in this day and age is that all it is is just copying a link and sending it to somebody. It's really super easy. I can't tell you how many times I've just been talking to friends and they rave forever about uh, a popular one recently has been the Cracked online podcast. And that makes me want to go home and listen to the Cracked podcast. It's totally free. So all I have to do is just play it on my phone while I'm playing video games or something. So it's really easy. And with by sending your podcast to submit at rrfedu.com, it's one of your first opportunities to really get it out there into the world. All right, Jonathan has a question. What's a good time limit for a podcast? Basically, I would say try not to go more than an hour. I would say 30 to 60 minutes somewhere in that time zone is pretty good. But again, it deter it's determined by your material. If you and your co-host, if you go on for quite a while, then keep it in as long as it's good. I would say that it helps. It really helps if you have a strong topic to talk about every time you sit down. Because if you are going to sit down and just, well, we'll figure out something as we start recording, you're going to get a lot of fumbling around that you're just going to have to edit out. I would say pick a topic and then just exhaust that topic. I've put up podcasts that were kind of short and I put up podcasts that were kind of long. But I would say record your first one or two, see how long those are, and then try and stick in that margin. So uh, you're very welcome, guys, who are thanking me for answering their questions. I think that might be everything. All right, so it looks like we are good. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, please stay involved with the RRFC's Hangouts. We're going to have one every week, I believe. So we have a lot more information coming, a lot more people who will be on this the Hangout sitting in this chair. They may have beards better than mine. They may have beards worse than mine. All you can do to find out is tune in. And there will be, obviously, much more important information as opposed to just facial hair facts. So thanks again for watching and tune in next time.